there's an opportunistic huntsman spider that's uh, trying to score a few bees. Today we're going to look at this hybrid hive and do a honeycomb harvest. So if you have a look in the back window here, this is our hybrid which um, we brought to market recently and it's now available to um, purchase from our store. Here you can see they're just putting honey in these frames here. So what this viewer is saying is that the frames aren't quite full yet. If we come around to the side, we do have some very nice honeycomb. So this hive has three flow frames in the middle, so you can have honey on tap in the middle, and we have harvested already from these middle frames a number of times, and there's some honeycomb on the edge for that time when you want to harvest that honeycomb and put it on the table if you've got a, a special party or it's a great thing to share with your family and friends. So what we're going to do is actually pull out some of that honeycomb today and have a, a look inside the hybrid super. Let's do that now. So of course it's a good idea to be in your bee suit. If you're new to beekeeping make sure you get a good bee suit. This is one of our mesh jackets which allows airflow which is nice when it's hot in summer. So you can see the the mesh it's got. Now what we're going to do is just apply a bit of smoke under the between the core flute and the inner cover so it'll go up through the screen now you can smoke at the entrance or you can smoke at the back of the hive here. Just get that smoker going a little bit better. Okay and it's not a bad idea to put that near the entrance of the hive so that the bees as they return get a waft of that smoke and it sets them into a less aggressive mood. Um, so I'm going to take that lid off now. You can see there's quite a lot of bees on the uh, inner cover which is a good sign it's a nice healthy hive they'll be building honeycomb in the roof in no time so if you've got the the full uh, what we call the classic flow hive then and it's got all six frames here you can still harvest honeycomb in this inner roof section but if you particularly like the honeycomb or attracted to the um, lower price point then you can um, do it like this with the hybrid box and having traditional frames on the edge for you to harvest. I'm just going to put my gloves on because these bees are a little bit toey today. It's good to really tune in with your bees and notice when they're getting a little bit aggressive and gives you a chance to put on your gloves and you'll get a few less bee stings. Some people are severely allergic to bees so do bear that in mind when you are beekeeping especially with other people around. I'm um, going to just uh, prise that inner cover. I've got my hive tool and I'm just levering under these corners here and lifting that cover off. Now I'm going to lean that up against the hive. This garden's really, really going well so that um, any bees get a chance to uh, crawl back into the hive. Now if we take a look here you can see in the top what I was talking about with two traditional frames on the edge and three flow frames in the center of the hive. And this sizing fits a standard eight frame Langstroth size equipment. So what I'm doing is I'm adding a bit more smoke to get the bees out of the way right where I want to lift this comb out. So if you come in close and have a look here you see, if, if you're new to beekeeping, you can lift the frame out with this, what's called a J tool. Break any comb that um, is joining the frames together first, so that when you lift that, that frame out, it's less likely to, uh, Leah, could you come and help Joe put his glove on? Um, when you lift that frame out, it's less likely to tear on the 
adjacent frame. So that's just cutting off these little pieces here. So Joe, my nephew, is behind the camera. The bees are a little bit on the towy side today, so he's putting his gloves on save getting some stings. Now I've cut off that right beside the uh, frames there and now I'm taking the frames out. So lift up one end, put your hand under that and with the J tool you can then get your, your tool under the end bar here and lift that comb out. Now that's a beautiful example of naturally drawn comb. It doesn't always go that nicely in the um, top box. Naturally drawn comb works very well in the, in the brood box, but as soon as you start moving up into supers, the bees can start from the bottom and work up and get quite wonky. So if you do want really straight comb, you can use foundation wax, and these frames are built to accommodate uh, wire and wax if you want to go that way. I prefer to just let them draw it naturally. There's no wires or anything to cut through when you're harvesting the comb. However, sometimes it does go a bit wonky. Not the end of the world, just uh, a bit interesting when you go to pull the frames out. So you can shake those bees off like so. And um, in this case, I don't have a, a bee brush. I often prefer to just use some foliage to, to, to brush those bees off. And then you're not sharing pathogens between hives too because that foliage can just be thrown away at the end. So you can brush those bees off your comb and you've got a beautiful honeycomb to put on the table to impress your friends with and uh, enjoy eating with your family. Now there's still a couple of bees left, but what I'm gonna do is just lean this hive, this frame over here and let the last bees return to the hive. Don't leave it there too long because other bees will start to find it. So this is what I meant by the naturally drawn comb. Just simply putting this comb guide, which we give you with the frames, in the top bar and allowing the bees a centre point to hang their, their comb from. It's a beautiful thing to watch that in a hybrid window and watch the bees actually draw their comb. If you've got any questions put them in the comments below and I'll endeavour to answer them as we go live. Every Wednesday we're here to answer your questions and be of support as you start your uh, beekeeping and also specific questions with the flow hive for those existing beekeepers. So feel free to jump on here every Wednesday, questions in the bottom and we'll answer them. Now next uh, frame better keep this uh, smoker going here. So we'll pull out another frame while we are here. Now if you want straight comb it's not a bad idea to just harvest one from either side so you're only leaving a space for them to to hang comb again uh, in, in between the two walls if you like the bees then can use the flow frame and uh, next frame as a guide. Okay, now did you do this Joe? <laughs> did you put this in the box? This is a, um, a bit of a, a trick here I think. If I, if I, <laughs> if I uh, take the, shake the bees off you can see there the um, <laughs> okay, we do have a Halloween special at the moment and it is till midnight on the 1st of November. If you haven't taken advantage of that, we do have a special on. So you can jump on our website and get a discount on a lot of things. That's, uh, <laughs> that's pretty funny. Happy Halloween everyone. And Halloween does have origins in harvesting. So we are right on cue harvesting some beautiful honeycomb to take back and enjoy with all the guests. 
<laughs> Very nice. Okay. Now, while we're at it, let's inspect one of the flow frames. We have harvested these recently. We'll see how they're going, filling that back up again. You can see there's a lot of bees in this box. It might pay to split this hive soon and form another colony, which is a great thing when you've got bees, you can split your hive and get another one going without having to order in more bees. Now, just smoking them away from where I'm working again. Um, and again, lifting the end bar with the tool. And there's a lifting point here under the end of the flow frame and one down the bottom here. So I'm just going to free that frame, come up gently, trying not to roll any bees in between the two frames. So there is a, a lot of bees in this box. So what we have here is the bees seem to be capping the comb off, which is nice up the top here. If you have a good look at that, you can see how these cells are full with honey, which is beautiful. And these cells, they're just starting to close those caps in. And they seem to be moving on this frame, down the frame in this direction. You can see the nectar here. shining in the cells, that beautiful nectar. As they, they fill that up and do their amazing work of reducing the water content. They need to reduce the water content below the 20% mark in order for the honey to keep and, and not ferment. So when the bees have put their wax capping on, that's when they've decided it's ready to keep and store. So that's the time to harvest, is not until it's well capped. So we're waiting to see the cappings in, in this window and if you, if you want to inspect and have a look and get an idea of what the frame looks like from this visual view, you'll learn what your hive does in terms of uh, storing the honey and how the end frame, this is another part of my dad and I's patented invention, is this view in the end gives you a great insight into the hive and what's going on, which means you can often harvest with out having to open the box. So we've got a lot of bees there again. It's gonna add a little bit of smoke. If you've got any questions, please feel free to put them in the comments below and we'll answer them. Mira has just joined, she's just watching. Oh, excellent. My sister in Berlin has just joined. She's over there um, missing the bee action here because it's, it's cold now, um, but she has been working with bees in that area and also traveling around um, Europe filming people with their flow hives harvesting. We now have flow hives in 130 different countries, so it's great. My sister is traveling around um, filming people and, and learning from, from how they're going with their, with their flow hives. Okay, if you're allergic to bees, that is a serious thing. And we do have first aid information on our website. So take a look at the first aid information. And it's, if, if you want to get into beekeeping and you're allergic to bees, then it's totally your choice. But of course, there is uh, risks and you need to manage that. So first aid links are on almost every page of our website. If you want to go and have a look at that. Any more questions? Deborah asks, how much wax do you put on the frame? So, on the, none is the answer for me. Some people like to put uh, foundation wax and that does guarantee that the bees will build a nice straight comb. Now, I like to let them do it themselves. You do get some wonky combs sometimes and that's a little bit more to manage, but it's a whole lot less work waxing and wiring and you're not importing foreign wax into your hive. Importing foreign wax does come with some risks of um, pathogens coming with that and it depends on how well they've sterilised that wax. Um, flow frames, if you put uh, the flow frames into a busy hive like this and there's a nectar flow on, they will cover all of the surfaces in wax and start filling that with honey. So they, they actually coat the uh, cells we give them, the partly formed flow frame cells, and join the pieces together and 
end up storing their nectar and honey inside their own wax. And yeah, so the answer is I don't put any wax in. Um, any more questions? Ralph is wondering where your bee suit came from and is it a full or a half suit? Okay, this is, this is a bee suit we have on our website. So it's one of the, the um, mesh ones that allows a bit of airflow, which is great on hot days like this. You're not sweating so much. The, um, it's a jacket, so I like to have a, a couple of things. I'm working with a really aggressive hive, which sometimes you do. You have to cut out a hive out of someone's wall or help somebody with a really aggressive hive, or I've got a few on my property um, as well. Um, then I like to have a full suit because there's less likelihood of them getting up under your jacket. However, for most beekeeping, I just wear this jacket, just simply easy to put on and away I go. Or if you like Leah and you're um, wearing a skirt, then you obviously don't want to wear a jacket. <laughs> so you'll need to wear a full bee suit. And we have all of those options on honeyflow.com on our website. They're, they're, um, we have a sale on some items at, at the moment, so do take a look. And um, the sale ends midnight, um, 1st of November. It's a Halloween um, sale, so fantastic. If you get inspired to jump in, putting your hive together and getting your bees, or if you're already an existing beekeeper and you want to try the flow system, then now's a, a good time to get in. So, any more questions? Um, Jenny's saying she's having trouble getting out the frames of her flow super. She can't budge them at all, and she's worried that if she puts too much pressure, something will break. Okay. Um, you, um, that's a good question. You won't break them. Um, and if you do, I'll replace it for you. How about that? Um, so this is um, a great tool for the job. If you don't have one of these tools, then they do come with our beekeeping um, kits. Um, there's three lifting points. So one is under the end back here. If you just want to come a little closer here. And if some bees really do glue everything together pretty hard. And if you haven't inspected in a while, they might be pretty, pretty firm. So um, there's, there's one point here that this J-tool goes under for a lift. So you can start prying there, see if you can get some movement. There's another point under, under here. And you can pry that and see if you can get some movement. And there's also another one down here to, to lift with. So try all those three points. If it's really still stuck, just get two tools and pry there and at the back at the same time, put some decent force on it and it will come up. Once you've got one up, then you can wiggle sideways a bit and it's easier from there. So good question. Um, we do have videos, we have Flow Hive YouTube channel and also our Facebook videos of how to lift out frames. So if you're stuck, you can always have a look at that content and um, get some pointers like I've just shown you. Thanks for the question. Bridget's asking, do you need the suit and smoker if you have a flow hive? Absolutely, you need the suit and smoker if you have a flow hive. The brood box is just the same as it's always been and needs the same care that it always has. So, a flow hive takes the work out of honey harvesting. In this case, we're a hybrid, so it's only taking the work out of honey harvesting of the centre three frames, where you can have honey on tap easily. Um, but the rest is just the same as normal beekeeping and you will need a suit and smoker and to look after your bees. So if you don't have those, you can go to our store on honeyflow.com and we have all of that equipment for you. Um, if uh, you'll also, even if you only choose to um, do the harvesting bit and get somebody else in to help you look after your brood nest, then you will still need a suit and smoker in order to inspect or perhaps as a swarm and you want to capture that swarm. It's definitely um, a really important part of beekeeping is to have the right equipment and what you'll find is it's a fascinating learning journey and the moment you put on your suit and start looking in the brood nest and watching how the bees are going, 
you will get addicted and it's, uh, and it's an amazing thing to actually become a beekeeper and a really important thing in our world for the past beekeepers to pass on that knowledge to the new ones. 40 years ago we had 200,000 beekeepers in the USA. Four years ago we had 100,000 beekeepers, so massive decline in the number of beekeepers, which obviously isn't good when we need the bees for, to support the human population as we know it. So we're really proud that we've inspired another something like 25,000 um, new beekeepers to get into beekeeping since we launched a couple of years ago. Hopefully um, you take the plunge, get your bee suit, get into the hive and really enjoy the fascinating world of bees. Um, we've got time for a couple more questions for those that are just tuning in. Um, uh, someone played a trick on me here and put this frame in the hive when I went to harvest the honeycomb. It is Halloween and we do have a, a special running till midnight tonight. Um, that's very cool. Um, that's the comb that, that you, you may have already seen on the banner. I just wasn't quite expecting it to be in this hive when I um, pulled the frames out. Looks great with the bees crawling through the eyes. And Halloween is that time. In uh, Some people say it's based on harvest festivals and all sorts of things. So, so um, to be harvesting honeycomb is, is quite appropriate. Any more questions? Dean's asking what are your thoughts in regards to having two brood boxes and then the honey super? Okay, two brood boxes and a honey super is something people commonly do. Um, however, if you're going to do that, then make sure you start off with a configuration like this, otherwise you'll be waiting too long to um, get your flow frames filled for the first time. That first time you put them in can take them a bit longer because the bees have to coat everything in wax and that does take a little time as they, they do that and then start filling it. If you put it too high up, you'll find that nothing much will be happening and you'll be writing to our great customer support team trying to get tips on how to make it happen faster because you'll be getting impatient. You wanna see that beautiful honey flowing out of the hive um, so I would recommend just having one brood box, then your flow super. If they're really busy like this, then sure, add another box. You can add another flow super or you can add another brood box up to you. A good question. Uh, we've got a two-part question from Bridget. She says, when will you be live again? I want my husband to watch as he doesn't believe the flow hive would work with harvesting honeycomb and that the bees will refill it. And she also says, and he wants to know if the bees take the caps off all the cells and will they refill them with honey? Okay, first question. We go live every Wednesday morning about this time. So it's about this time every week, wherever you are in the world. And we do a range of things. We um, harvest honey live, so that it'll be great for your husband to see if he doesn't believe it actually works. When we first launched, we had a whole world of, of beekeepers saying that's impossible. What you have invented is impossible. And we're going, oh, well, here it is and it's working. <laughs> and it was a process of having to convince the world that this actually works. And now we have 45,000 or more now flow hives in 130 countries and we are flooded with people harvesting honey. So every week people write in and send photos and videos. If you've got photos and videos of your harvest, send them in, send them into Facebook so that um, other people who don't believe it actually works can see. And next week we'll be doing a hive split, but the week after that we'll harvest honey again for you to see live. Now, the third bit of the question was the capping on the frame. So when the bees fill up the frame, they then put this wax capping over the top to seal it to keep that to keep that honey for for the winter or, or in our case for the European winter that doesn't come um, so they seal it in now what happens when we harvest is the bees are left standing on their capping and the honey drains out from beneath their feet now we didn't know when we were inventing the flow hive whether or not 
it would the bees would uncap that wax but luckily they do it must sound a bit different underfoot they get straight in there and start uncapping those cells now a busy hive will uncap all the cells in a day fix up all the cells and start filling them with honey again and you can watch in a matter of hours that process happening you can even watch it starting to happen just as you're finishing harvesting now if you've got a hive where they've swarmed or something and there's not many bees in it they may choose to leave the cappings on for some time before chewing them away fixing up the cells and starting that process again but it was a stroke of luck to have the bees actually um, recognize that the honey wasn't in the cells uncap it and start the process again which makes it uh, a less disturbing process because the bees can then be standing on a capping while you harvest the honey straight out of the box. Thank you very much. Tune in same time next week. There's no such thing as a silly question. If you've got more, put them in the comments below and we'll endeavour to answer them. Um, and I hope uh, we can be here for you to support you on your beekeeping journey if you're just getting in new to bees or with the flow frames if you're an existing beekeeper who wants to try them. We do have a dedicated support team ready to, to um, assist you with any inquiries. So please don't hesitate to write in. Thank you and happy Halloween.